Hello, it's Duncan. This week we're going to build a client for a simple web API with HTTP 4K. We're still in the middle of implementing this story, which is display item price. And we know we're going to have to go to some web services that price up items for us. Working from the outside in, we've added pricing into our listing. And we represented price by a value class wrapping along in pence and pricing how we get a price we're representing as a function that takes an item and returns a nullable price because any service may not know the price for a particular item so let's see if we can implement this interface talking to a web service so i've created a pricing client tests where we'll do our work and we'll create a test in there and this is going to talk to the real value of service. Now we've been given details of a test server, and that is at the URI HTTP value elf.com, and they're running that server on port 8080. Let's see what happens if we go to that server and query it in a browser. That was HTTP value elf.com 8080, and they told us it's in prices. And you see, here's a test I've done earlier. We can pass an ID and a quality into the query string. Let's see what we get. Okay, we get 609. Well, let's remember those and write ourselves a bit of a client for that. Right, I'm going to paste that in here just so we remember it. And I think we probably want to build some sort of client. And we're going to give it the base URI, the one that we've got up there. We can tell IntelliJ what interface we want to implement, that is to say, something that takes item and returns a nullable price. Then it will create a function for us, return the right type. Let's pull that out of here, out of the test and just into the test file. As we know, it's going to be our production code. That's not nullable. How will we know when we're done? Well, we know that passing in banana and a quality of nine gives us 609 as a price. So let's assert that. That's what happens if we ask the client to process an item where its ID is banana, its name, we don't care about. The sell by date doesn't matter. We'll use local date now. And we know that we passed a quality of nine. Okay. That'll take a bit of importing and messing around with. So we'll lay it out here. Import that. The ID constructor needs to be imported and that's nullable. So we'll double bang it. This is a non blank string. And again, that constructor can return null and the same with the quantity. We normally use our test item factory, but that doesn't allow us to specify the ID at the moment. Maybe we'll fix that in a minute. Just bring our item out of here. And if we run that, then we expect it to fail because we don't actually have a client here. Okay, that's our to do. Now in order to make HTTP requests, we want some sort of client and HTTP 4K comes with several of those. I've imported an Apache client. And then import is here, HTTP 4K client Apache. Now that actually just implements our HTTP handler. So we can use it as if it was a server. So this client for is going to return a function type. Let's return that as a Lambda. And we know it's going to take an item and yield a price. Now we can make this test pass by just returning price of 609. So let's do that. So we faked it. Now let's see whether we can make it. We need to build a request out of this item and pass it to this client. So we're going to have a request and that is going to be a get on some URI we need a string and I love it would be a bit easier here if we actually made a request to slash prices, so we can pass that in. That would allow us to say URI to string to build a request. Having built the request, we need to add the query parameters to it. So query, we know we've got ID and that needs to come from the ID of our item, but we need a string, that's that. Let's lay this out a bit better. And we have another query that's going to be item to quality to string again. Now we can give that request to the client. And what we'll do, I think, is just print here what we get back. Let's just run this single test. 
And here then is the response. You can see it's an HTTP OK, and it's got a content length, and the body is actually 609, which is what we want. So now we can take our response body string to long and put that into our price. Let's try that. Well, that was suspiciously easy, so we should probably think about ways that it could go wrong. The first and most obvious is that the service doesn't have a price for that item. Let's have a look and see what it does in those cases. So we replace our ID with, say, no such, and see what we get. Well, a blank screen is the answer. Once upon a time, web browsers treated as grown-ups and told us the error codes, but now we have to inspect, go to the network, reload, have a look at the response, and find that it's sending a 404. Okay, let's put that behavior into our client. We'll duplicate this test, and this is returns null when no price. And now we know that if we ask for no such, then we should get back a null. Let's try that. Well, we've got an exception there from parse long by the look of things. So let's go and say if response status not found and null, else the price. Run that. And that passes. We should probably make this a when and return the price only on OK. And that will allow us to have an else that says other responses are an error. Run that. Good. And now just tidy up this test a bit. The URI and the client are common. So we can pull those out into our test fixture and run that. Now this is a bit of a mouthful. Let's go and add a version of test item. It's in here. So what we want is one like this that also has a string for the ID, where our ID is built from that. Now we can make this one work in terms of the other one. Passing in the name, the cell by date, and the quality. And now back to our test, and we should then then be able to use test item, giving it just the raw strings. And the same in here. And we can rename this to be returns price when there is one. Now we made a change to our test data, so let's run all of our tests to check that they all still work. Good. Now, finally, these tests, we probably don't want to run all the time because they're talking to an API that's beyond our control. So maybe rename this and disable them all. So we can run them by hand if we want to, but they won't be run as part of our test suite on check-in. Before we finish, it's worth noting that this is one of these places where we might have introduced a class before, but because we're just implementing a function type, it was very easy to return a lambda here and had this client as what would normally be a field or property of a class. I'm going to leave this in the test tree for now until we're ready to call it from our production code. And we might be in a position to do that next episode. If you'd like to see that episode, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like the content, then I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote with Nat Price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.